Hi, my name is Jonathan Rizzo with TTN HD Productions. We're here at the Boston International Film Fest, and I'm here today with the uh, subject of the documentary, including, including Samuel, excuse me. Uh, Keith Jones is here. He's going to talk with us today about the movie. So, Keith, tell me, uh, tell me the storyline of the documentary here. Uh, the storyline of that, including Samuel, really follows the filmmaker Dan Habib uh, and his family's journey through discovering their child has a disability and trying to include the child, Samuel, uh, their son, into, you know, community, school, and everything like that, and talking about the barriers that they discovered when they found out their child has a disability. And it really was an enlightening, and the film is fantastic. They ended a bang-up job, you know, I'm and I'm really honored to be in the film. How did you meet him? How did you meet Dan himself? Uh, Dan actually, during his research, uh, was introduced to myself uh, through, a, through a friend who thought that I would make a good subject for the film. I still laugh because I don't think I'm that interesting, but, you know, it is what it is, I guess. So. <laughs> Very cool. So, so then how did he come up with this idea? Why this kind of documentary? Well, I think he, well, Dan says that, um, you know, when he discovered that Sam had a disability, you know, they, Dan and Betsy had never known that. Um, the world of disability was as it is now. Um, it is the last great civil rights struggle because people with disabilities are not fully included. We still have issues with equality, work equality, education equality, and just being fully included in American society. And so his film deals with uh, inclusion in a very objective way because it's easy to go one way because you're a parent but he did a very balanced approach, talked about the pros and the cons, and left it up to people to decide whether or not inclusion works for them. Wow, very interesting. Tell me how you met him. Tell me what was the budget on this project like? Uh, Dan had a lot of support from the Institute uh, on Disability from the University of New Hampshire, other grants, and um, his own personal uh, finances a little bit. And it was really a, a, a project of love. Um, and a project of dedication of work because he thought and he still feels that this is an issue that needs to be talked about because even now, um, you know, some 15 to 16 to 20 years after the ADA, we're still having issues with including people with disabilities in our society. How does that affect you on a day-to-day -day basis? What is that like? Uh, it, depends, it, depends on how, it depends on what kind of mood I'm in. Um, some days I kind of, you know, it's it's analogous to, um, you know, the civil rights movement, or it's analogous to the gay and lesbian civil rights movement, where you just want to be. You just want to be able to get up, go, do what you got to do, and be done with it, and not have to worry about, are people judging me because of my disability, or can I get it, literally, can I get into the movie theater without having to go through hoops and rings of fire, or can I get on the tee? You know, just really day-to-day -day things. So a lot of things people, you may go through on the day-to-day -day basis that are second thought. To me, I have to plan four and five steps ahead. So it, on any given day, depending on my attitude, I can either go with it or I can curse the world out every time. You know, it's, it's, it's just like that. So. I mean, I think everybody deals to the, with that to some degree, but I mean, it, it must be a little more amplified. Uh, tell me, what kind of equipment were they using for the movie? What did you guys do? Uh, Dan had Dan shot it all by himself. It was really cool. I mean, he had his own, you know, Canon camera, and he literally brought a tripod and set it down, and we just talked. It was it was a single shot documentary. I mean, it was not this, you know, I got a million dollars on to do crane shots and all of this crazy. It really was a straightforward, I you know handheld, you know, tripod kind of, kind of, kind of film, and, you know, and I think what it did was it made the film a lot richer, because it made it warmer, and it made it less glossy, and really made you focus on the story. That's so important. Storyline is one of the most important elements, the most important element absolutely, of film. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So tell me, what, uh, what obstacles did you have to overcome for the filmmaking process? Uh, it's not a sexy subject. Um, it's just not. Nobody wants to talk about including people who are different than them unless it's sexy. Um, and disability, for whatever it's worth, people to look at it as it challenges their mortality. Uh, if somebody sees me, they go, 
oh, you poor man. And they go, you know, and in their mind, they're thinking, oh, my God, if that was me, I don't know what I could deal. You know, and it's sort, it's sort of that, but for the grace of God, there go I. And when that, when people think like that, and you talk about disability, you know, nobody, you know, they either really want to be really sad be, or make you the super crip. And it's one or the other when really it's just people dealing with what they were, what they have to deal with. So. Uh, that's totally real. I'm, I'm reading this book by, uh, it's called um, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. Okay. It's a, it's a good book. It's, uh, it's about, uh, it's about the Holocaust and uh, surviving the concentration camp. Sounds a lot like what you're talking about. Very deep, deep, very interesting stuff. How you got to, you got to survive, right? What are you gonna do, man? This is where you're at. That's it, yeah. So what's the main message behind the film? Uh, the main message really is people with disabilities are just that people. Um, it's sort of like saying black people are like you know are people. Uh, people who are gay and lesbian are people. And it really is, we need to deal with people at that level and not really worry about, um, oh my God, you know, they're not like us. Because when you do that, you, are not, you don't know who could be in that crowd. If you had Albert Einstein in that crowd and you were like, oh God, we don't want Albert Einstein, we wouldn't have the theory of relativity. If you did that with, you know, George Washington Carver or, the, or who laid out Washington DC we wouldn't have the nation's capital so you really have to think about before you exclude what are you excluding and inclusion doesn't hurt anybody except for those who you try to exclude and that's the message that we all are just people that's very that's compelling so tell me uh, let's wrap it up I guess uh, give me one one thing you can say talk right to the camera to our, your future audience out there why should they come see the movie why should they come see you on the big screen because I'm in it no uh, really in, in all honesty I think this film really challenges us on education inclusion and if America really is to live up to its um, its de declaration of you know, the life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, then all people should be entitled to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I'm Jonathan Rizzo with TTNHD Productions. We're here at the Boston International Film Festival. Thank you very much for watching.